Hello, welcome back to your theory one. Okay, so we are now on your module two, which is the analysis of statically determinate structures. So in this module, we will be discussing the first unit, which is about the force system and fundamentals of equilibrium equations. Okay, so in this unit, we are going to recall the force systems, okay, which is discussed in your physics. Recall also the fundamental equations of equilibrium, which is discussed in your mechanics. Okay, so these are now the four systems. So that is categorized into two. We have the first one, which is coplanar. If you say coplanar force system, that for those forces lie on a single plane. So if you say plane, we are talking about here a single surface or a surface, okay, flat surface that is considered as a single plane. So if all the forces uh, lie on that single surface or that single plane, then that is what we call as the coplanar force system. Okay, they they belong to a single plane, so we call this one coplanar. Or that is, uh, in other words, two D. Okay, two dimension, since that is just a plane. Okay, so under that uh, type or under that category of force system, we have these uh, subtypes which are four. Okay, we have what we call as the collinear. Forces, okay, if you say collinear forces, forces lie on a single line. So this is the first the first force and the second force they lie. Okay, the line of action or is lying on a single line or they act on a single line. Okay. So they act on a single line. So that is a collinear forces, which is possible on a single plane. Okay. On a flat surface that is possible. And then uh, second there is a parallel forces. Okay, parallel forces. Okay. They are parallel. But they do not coincide with each other, therefore they are not collinear, but they are parallel. Okay, so that is uh, the second type of coplanar force systems. And then uh, third there is the concurrent forces, okay, concurrent forces. We say concurrent, they meet, okay, they act on a single point. Okay, they act on a single point. Let's say this is the first point, Se I mean first force, second force, which is on a single plane, they act on the same point or on a single point they meet on a single point so that is what we call the concurrent forces so if we say concurrent force that is not possible for a parallel force they will never meet since they are of course parallel but for collinear they are parallel at the same time concurrent okay so that is uh, what we call this one uh, a combination of parallel and collinear force a concurrent forces okay uh, i'm sorry a combination of concurrent, uh, concurrent and parallel. So they meet and at the same time they are parallel. So now they belong to a single line. Collinear forces. And then lastly, non-concurrent. So that means they act on different points. They act on different points. At the same time, they are not parallel. Okay? But they belong on a single plane. So that is a coplanar force system. They lie on a single plane. Okay? That depends on their orientation with respect to one another. And of course, those are now the four subtypes. Okay? So again, coplanar, we, we call that one the coplanar or plane, or in, in other terms, that is a 2D, okay, 2D for system. And then the second cat category there is the non-coplanar. If they do not now belong on a single plane, it means they act on different, different planes. Then that means uh, it is now not a 2D, since of course that is now not a single plane, it is now different planes. So now you are reverse you are referring to in 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 plane we are just referring here to x and y isn't it if this is a single plane that is an x or a y we measure the uh, coordinates by x and y coordinate but since now there is now a what we call this one uh, a third axis which is a z since again they belong on a different planes then that will now become a 3d okay so instead of only x and y, there is now the perpendicular to that plane, which is now the z-axis. And that is what we call as the non-coplanar, or we sometimes call that one as the spatial, okay? Spatial force system. Or in other terms, if this is 2D, then this is 3D. 2D, two-dimensional, that is the meaning of 2D, since that is uh, being only coordinated by x and y. But in here... There is now the Z, so X, Y, Z, so it is a three-dimensional force system, okay? So forces do not lie now on a single plane, therefore that will make it spatial, okay, spatial or non-coplanar or 3D force system. And then under that, if that's the case, okay, they do not belong on a single plane anymore. Therefore, this collinear force is not possible already, okay? 
because you will only have a collinear again as i've said collinear is passing on the single uh, they uh, they are concurrent forces at the same time they are parallel so they are collinear but if they do not belong already to a single plane then that means okay maybe they are parallel yes but they are of different planes so that is now not collinear so there is no collinear type of uh, force system on spatial or spatial okay uh, it could be that they could be concurrent okay in a in a 2d plane they could be concurrent in a 3d plane they could still be concurrent but now they do not belong in a single plane maybe the other one is already inclined to the z axis okay but they still meet on a or they still act on a single point so we have here again parallel so again they could be parallel but they belong on a different planes and then they could be concurrent but they belong on a different planes okay it means this is the plane for that force and this is the plane for that force okay so that is now concurrent forces on spatial or non complainer force system and then we have here the non-concurrent of course that is always possible it could be in two, two plane they do not belong they, they are not parallel they do not act on a single point they do not they are not parallel and at the same time they do not belong on a single plane so that is now a non-concurrent forces on your spatial force system so those are the forces uh, force systems discussed of course in your physics so we are going to make use of those okay in analysis of structures we are going to make use of these four systems okay so actually this is just uh, an outline for that so four system it could be uh, categorized by two coplanar or non-coplanar or that is 2d 3d and in uh, 2d that is now either collinear parallel concurrent non-concurrent in your spatial or non-coplanar or 3d uh, the same thing only that collinear is not possible okay only that collinear is not possible anymore so those are now our four systems and then now fundamental equations of equilibrium so let's try to recall the fundamental equations of equilibrium from of course your mechanics so in order for a body to be in, e in equilibrium state the summation of forces in all direction and the summation of moments at any point okay uh, please do not be uh, confused with this. Maybe in your mechanics you are only used in uh, what do this one? Planar, planar force system. It means it means you are just referring to two D figures. But in theory of structures, we will now be considering the actual, which is three D. Okay. For example, again as I've said, building that is now that is now a frame. Okay, that is now a frame, which if you will consider the forces acting on each of the member, that will now be a 3d or spatial force system so again if you are now uh, getting instead from the 2d in 2d if you are taking a moment that is about a point but in 3d if you are taking a moment then that will now be about an axis so that is the difference of a 2d and 3d but the same thing a moment is the force times the uh, perpendicular distance okay perpendicular of perpendicular distance of the force to the reference Again, in 2D, your reference is a point. In 3D, your reference is an axis. Okay? So, again, as I've said, equilibrium state. A body will be in completely equilibrium state if summation of forces in all directions, if that is 2D, summation of forces on X and Y, that should be zero. And at the same time, summation of moment at any point, if that is 2D. If that is 3D, now we have... Uh, summation of x, summation of y, and uh, together with summation of z, summation of z, that is now a three-dimensional. So we need to satisfy all these three in a 3D force system. But at the same time, okay, taking a moment should all be zero, okay, taking a moment with respect to any axis, any axis, if you say axis, that is a line of action, okay, so taking a moment within or about an axis, that uh, any axis, of course, the same thing in 2D, any point. In 3D, taking a moment in any axis, that should all be zero. Okay, so that is for us. That is for us to make sure that the body is in completely equilibrium state. There is no movement horizontally, vertically, and uh, z-axis, or there is no rotation. Okay, so any, as I've uh, discussed on the introduction, any unbalanced force or moment, of course, any unbalanced force or moment, if you will try to submit, that will create emotion within the body. So now, okay, so this is just to, uh, what do you call this one, uh, simple equation, okay, 
summation of forces direction in any direction of course in any direction if that is 2d again we are referring here to x and y axis if that is 3d in addition to x and y will be z axis okay and then at the same time summation of moment if that is 2d with respect to point but if that is 3d with respect to an axis should all of these should all be zero in order for that to be equilibrium okay so i already if you will read this one i already explained that one a while ago so again 2d is uh, satisfying x and y 3d is satisfying x y z so you can read about this okay so that is for unit one we just tried to recall okay we just try to recall the four systems and the fundamental equations of equilibrium since these are what we need now if we will now proceed on the analysis of structures Okay, so now, uh, unit 2, this is now referring to determinacy and stability of structure. So this is very, very important now for us to categorize the type of uh, structure since, again, uh, there are simpler structure which we call this one as determinate. That is purely, an, uh, you can analyze that one by uh, mainly or by simply using the fundamental equations of equilibrium. So that is the focus of theory 1. But now, if that is now indeterminate, again, as I've said on the introduction, that will now be analyzed on the theory 2, or that is the focus of theory 2. Okay, about stability, okay, we will discuss that one within the succeeding slides. So, in this unit, okay, so we are going to determine the determinacy of structure, okay. Now, if we say determinacy, that is the degree, degree, okay, degree of determinacy. And then evaluate, of course, the stability of structure. So, let's start with the external determinacy of structure. If we say external determinacy, okay, we are referring here to the determinacy of the uh, system of the structure itself with respect to the outside forces. Okay, with respect to the outside forces within the structure. If we say determinacy, okay, that the simplicity. Is that determinate? Again, it, it means that it's simple, solvable by simply summation of forces and summation of moment. But if that is now indeterminate, then that will that will be needing additional equation, additional to the equilibrium equations. But again, as I've said uh, before in the introduction, theory one only focuses. Let's focus our concentration on determinate structures. Let's worry about that indeterminate once we will go on theory two. But of course, Within this uh, theory one, we need now to know how to differentiate or how to figure out if this is determinate or indeterminate. And this is, of course, this what we call as determinacy, okay? The determinacy. So, okay, so external, again, that is the effect of the outside or external forces within the entire structure. Or simply, it means uh, we are referring here to solving reactions, okay? Because once you have an external force, apply that one on your structure, what you will have within your structure is uh, what we call this one reaction. On your supports, of course, support of the reaction, you will be experiencing reaction. Those are external. If you say external, the force is outside the body itself. Outside yet the body. But now, once we transfer these external forces, the external force and together with the reaction, okay, the external reaction, then we will have what we call as the internal stresses or that is the internal forces the forces experienced within the members if this is the beam then that is the force or the stress within the beam okay so that is uh, external and internal external again is outside the system or outside the members what is happening outside the members internal now is within or inside the members okay so again determinacy uh, we will try to figure out if uh, if that is determinate, if we say determinate externally, we can solve the reactions by equations of equilibrium. But if that is not indeterminate, then that will now be discussed on your higher uh, theory two. Okay, because you need to uh, have additional equation with your equilibrium. Okay, so this is our three equations. Okay, all you need to do actually is to compare your R with this uh, other side of equation, which is three plus e sub c. Okay, what are these? You can refer here below. Okay, these are the descriptions. We're in R there are the support reactions, the number of the support reactions. And of course, you are already uh, doing this in your mechanics. We're in, uh, you should know the number of supports. Uh, I mean, number, yes, number of reactions. I mean, 
within a certain specific type of support. So if that's a fix, there are three reactions. Horizontal, uh, I, we are talking here of, uh, by the way, we are talking here of, what we call this one, 2D. Let's try to focus first on 2D before we will jump to 3D on your next uh, succeeding discussions. So if we are talking here of two-dimensional or a planar force system, this number of support, no, number of reactions on a fixed support is uh, restrained horizontally, restrained vertically, and restrained rotation. So okay, uh, for horizontal reaction, vertical reaction, and then moment reaction. But if that is now a pin, you will now uh, remove the what to call this one, the moment reaction, so only horizontal and vertical reaction. And if that is a ruler, only a single reaction which is depend on the orientation of the ruler that is horizontal or vertical. Okay, so that is the R number. So here, okay, and we will try to discuss at the same time with this example. So as you can see, this is a combination, I mean, this is a frame, actually a framing. Okay, so we have here the supports. Okay, these are the supports. So this is a fixed support. This is a uh, pin support, pin support, pin support. Actually, this, okay, these are what we call as the internal connection okay if we say uh, this is different from support because support is to resist is to resist the entire structure in moving your uh, internal support or internal connection support these are actually the connections of members so just like this one you'll try to look at this connecting this part of the structure with this part the left side and the right side is a ruler it means that uh, in case this will uh, deflect or bend, that is free to move horizontally here, since that is the orientation of the ruler. Same thing here. If this will be stretched or that will be uh, shortened, it, it is free, since that is uh, supported or re the, I mean that is not prevented by the ruler. What is only prevented by the ruler is the vertical movement of these two. Okay? So that is uh, not a reaction, okay? That is not a, an external reaction, that is an internal, okay, internal. And so this, this is a pin, okay? This is a pin. It means that that is free to rotate, but it is not. It is restrained vertically and horizontally in movement. In ruler, that is only restrained vertically, that is free to move horizontally, okay? So again, reactions are the external supports. So in here is a fix, pin, pin, pin. So there are three reactions in a fix. Two in each of the pins, so how much is that? Or yes, so all in all, three plus two plus two plus two. So six plus three is equal to nine. So your reaction there is nine. But at the same time, your E sub C is the equation of conditions, okay? That is now where we will be using this uh what do you call this one? Internal connection supports or internal supports, okay? So if you recall your mechanics in solving reactions, if there is an internal ruler, you can separate that one. That will that will now be okay. You can cut that one on the internal ruler, and then you can separate. That will now be additional equation, in addition to the equations of equilibrium. So that will be giving us another uh, equation to use to solve the reactions. So we have here a pin. Okay. So according to this, okay. So as I've uh, written here. That if your if your internal uh, connection is hinged or internal pin, then your additional equation, okay, in addition to the equations of equilibrium, that is your E sub C, is n minus one, where in n there is the number of connected members. So if that is a hinge, just like this one, okay, that is a hinge. How many members are there? Are connected within this pin is three, and according to the formula here, the number of additional equation that we will be adding with your equilibrium equation is n minus 1. So n is the number of connected members, there are 3, and then minus 1 will be 2. Okay, so that is 3 minus 1. That, so that will be giving us 2. That is the additional equation to be given by this uh, pin, internal pin. If your internal connection is internal ruler just like this, the number of equations of condition which will be added will be 2 times n minus 1. Okay, your n again is the number of connected members. So if you will try to go here, how many connected members? 1, 2. So n is 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1 times 2. So there will be additional 2 equations to be added. Okay, so let's try to uh, calculate that one. Okay, 
So A sub C is the uh, hinge is n minus 1, n minus 1, 3 minus 1, 3 members minus 1. In your ruler, internal ruler is uh, twice the n minus 1. So twice the n, there are 2 members minus 1. So this will be 2, that is 2, so a total of 4. So where are we going to use this one again? Just to satisfy your equations. For us to determine if that is determinate or indeterminate. Okay? So we have here your E sub C to be 4, R to be 9. So substitute it there. Your, if your R, your left side here is 9. And then your right side is 3 plus that 4 will be 7. Okay? So 9 plus 7. 9, I mean not 9 plus 7. 9 compared to 7. Okay, so R is greater now than your 3 plus EC. So 9 is greater than 7, so yes. So according to this uh, condition here, if your reaction... Okay, by the way, what is the 3? You might be asking me, sir, what is the 3? Okay, the 3 is, since we are focusing on a plane, okay, plane force system, okay? The 3 there is the available equations of equilibrium. If, if we will now be going on a 3D, that will now be 4. Okay, because X, X, Y, Z, and moment. But in, since we are focusing on 2D plane, that is X, Y, and summation of moment. So those are the 3 equations of equilibrium. So we are actually comparing here the numbers of equation with the unknown reactions. Since we are focusing on the external reactions. Okay, so again, we are just comparing here actually the number of unknowns which are the reactions with the number of available equation which we will be using and again by rule of algebra isn't it that if uh, unknowns is more than the number of equation we cannot solve that one so that will now be what we call as the indeterminate again as i kept on repeating about determinate and indeterminate okay uh, the more the reaction compared to the equation available equation that will make it indeterminate since it is not solvable we need an additional okay uh, this is not the additional, of course. This is just uh, equations of condition are also uh, coming from equilibrium equations. Okay, so that is different from what I'm saying on the theory 2, which will be the compatibility. That is a different, uh, co that is the different equation, okay? So this equation of condition is also derived from equilibrium. Okay, so all of these are equilibrium. So we are only using equilibrium equations. So again, the three available equations of equilibrium originally okay if there is now internal uh, connections then you will have additional equations which are the e sub c equations of condition okay so now if i will add that is seven the available equation is seven but the unknowns are nine so it means that is indeterminate okay your reaction is more than the equation but if it is exactly that your reaction is equal to the the unknown reaction is equal to the available equation is statically determinate Okay, that is perfectly statically determined. And then, what if, that is now the question, okay, as I've simplified before, it is still considered determinate because we can determine, okay, that is of course the meaning of the word determinate means we are go we, we can determine. However, okay, uh, we can, uh, what will this one, uh, put a specific description for that. If your reaction is less than the equation, we call that one unstable unstable structure so that is now how we will relate determinacy with stability but later on okay let me discuss that unstable the meaning of that unstable it means unstable it might that the entire structure is now moving because that there is not enough reactions and there are other reasons on that okay so we will be discussing that on the succeed on the next slides okay so this is just external determinacy all you need to do is compute how many unknown reactions Compare that one with the available equations. Do not forget, okay? There are three equilibrium equations. And then plus, if there are additional conditions, which is also equilibrium equations. Okay? So, compare the equation with the unknown. You can determine if that is indeterminate or determinate. If that is less than, the, the unknown is less than the equation, unstable. Okay? So, let's now move. As I've said, there are two cases. If we are now... Uh, referring to the force outside with this, uh, the, uh, the action of the force outside with the reaction of the system that is externally, external effect. Now on the internal, okay, we will now try to focus on the member stresses or the uh, forces on the members, members of the uh, structure itself, okay. 
in determining if it is determinate or in determining the determinacy of structures, uh, trusses, equations for trusses and equations for frames and beams are different. Okay, frames and beams are almost alike since again, beam or frame is a combination of a beam together with other types of members like columns and slabs. Okay, so that is a frame. So uh, beam and frame are similar. So they will be using single equation. But truss, since truss is a pin connected in all the connection that is free to rotate in a truss. So there is no moment. Okay, in beams and frames, there are, in, there are internal moment. But in trusses, there are no internal moment. So that is the big difference of this two or these three types, okay, three types of structures, common use types of structures, okay. So for trusses, these are the equations that we need to satisfy internally, okay. If we say internally, we are referring here now to the uh, effect inside the members, okay. In the external, a while ago on the previous slide, we are referring to uh, determinacy in solving the supports, if it is indeterminate, then we cannot solve the support by the num the values of the supports by simply using equations of equilibrium. But if it is determined, then we can determinate, then we can use that one. We can solve the re all the reactions. But now in internal, we are referring now to internal forces. So we are not uh, focusing ourselves now on the support reactions. Okay. So it means that we will pass first the external determinacy before internal determinacy. Okay. Because again. You should uh, remember the flow. Apply the load, distribute that one on the react on this structure. You will now end up with reactions of the supports, and then with the support reactions and with the external forces, you are going now to apply that one on the entire structure. Distribute that one on the members. Okay, so this is now the second phase, which is to distribute on the members. So now let's say we pass through the external external. Uh, determinacy. So it means we can solve the reaction. Now the problem is given the reaction and forces, can we now distribute this one in all of the members? Okay? Okay, so now so this is now the, the determinacy internally. So if we say it is determinate internally, then it means we can do that. We can distribute the reaction and the external force within the members by simply using again the equations of equilibrium. But if it is indeterminate, then we cannot do that. Therefore, that will be discussed in your theory too because there are methods to dis distribute the external forces on the members even if there are if this is indeterminate. Okay? So, again, this is theory 1. We will focus ourselves but we should know how to differentiate if this is determinate or indeterminate externally and internally. So, okay. So, internal. Again, as I said, we are done with external. All you need to do is compare the support reaction with the available equation okay now uh, in here same thing okay the reaction outside reaction but this time since we are referring here to internal so your member forces are considered reactions okay so m there is the number m is the number of members and r there is the support reaction of course and j there is the joint again okay? joint number of joints so again, okay, if you recall your mechanics, how we solve the member stresses? How are we go how did we solve the member stresses of this uh, truss? Isn't it is uh, what to call this one uh, applying at the uh, to call this one method of joints and method of sections? Okay, so that is what to call this one way of solving your member forces of trusses. So we are now comparing here since the joints are the way of solving the member forces then that is now referring to the number of equations, okay? So the number of available equations to solve the member forces of a truss is twice the number of joints. So these are now the equations available and these are now the unknowns. So again, the unknowns are the reaction and the member forces. So all we need to do is compare again. If this reaction, the left side is the reaction, is less than the available equation, again, unstable. If they are equal, Determinate if they are if this reaction is more than the available equation indeterminate, which will be discussed in your theory too. Okay, so just like this example, okay. So your external external support, so this is a ruler, one reaction, pin, two reactions. So actually if we will try to uh, 
address or we are going to analyze this one externally, this is determinate since there are only three reactions, isn't it? There are only three reactions. But since we are now referring here to internal, okay, we are not just focusing on the reaction, but at the same time, we will consider the members. So we will add the members, number of members, one, two, three, four. Okay, so horizontal is one, two, two vertical, three, four, and then you'll find five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are now nine members. So R is three, M is nine, and then later on we will be using the size, so we need to find the number of joints. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I put this number in, it means that is the counting of the members in the joints. The red is for the members, the green is for the, uh, I mean, sorry, the red is for the joints, the, uh, the green is for the members. So joint is one, two, three, four, five, six, there are six. So now let's try to find out what will be the relationship of the reaction and equation. So M plus R, M plus R, so three plus nine is 12. Three plus nine is 12, okay? And then your twice J or twice the number of joint is 12. It means they are exactly equal the equation equation and the unknown are equal so that is now perfectly determined internally in here externally since we are just focusing on the reaction in here member forces internally okay so statically determined internally in here statically indeterminate since reaction is bigger than the unknown i mean equation sorry okay so now that is only for trust this is only for the internal determinacy of trusses. Let's now focus, uh, let's now proceed to beams and frames. As I've said, the difference of truss and beams and frames is that beams and frames have internal moment. So within the member, we have what we call as the moments. That's why you have mo shear and moment equation. There is a shear and moment equation on a beam and frame. But for a truss, that is purely tension or compression. Okay, so the, that is the big difference of these types of structure. So for beams and frame, this is what we need to satisfy. A while ago, that is just M plus R compared to 2J. In here, now, 3 times N plus R, okay, compared to 3J plus EC. Again, the EC is the equations of condition, which is again discussed ex on the external determinacy, how to calculate that one, okay? So, the same thing, if these are, these are now the reactions, again, these are now the reactions or the unknowns, these are now the available equations. So, uh, what, are, what we are going to do here is to compare. So, in here, again, I'll just count. M is the member, R is the support reaction, J is the joint, E sub C is the equations of conditions. So, let's start with the R. Uh, reaction, support reaction. Again, as I've said, we computed this one a while ago, isn't it? 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So, a total of 9. Your uh, member, okay, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5. Your joint is 1, 2. Okay, so uh, include include the internal uh, supports as a joint. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Total of 6 joints. So now, compute this 3M plus R. So 3 times M is 15 plus 9 is 24. And now the other side, 3 times joint plus E sub C. But before that, we will first compute the E sub C. But we computed that one already, isn't it? Uh, this is hinge, uh, n minus 1. This is twice n minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2, and this is uh, twice 2 minus 1. And so 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Again, the, the solution is here on the previous. Okay, so that is your E sub C. Now, we calculate this other side. 3 times joint, your joint is 6. So 3 times 6 is 18. Plus your E sub C is 4. So 18 plus 4 is 22. So your equation is 22, your unknown is 24. So again, unknown is bigger than the equation. So therefore, this is indeterminate. Okay? Internally, internally. So it means this is the same example as a while ago in the external determinacy. It says, isn't it? A while ago, out on the external, it is indeterminate. And internally, that is also, that is also indeterminate. So it means this is structure is internally and externally indeterminate. Your trust here, we prove that this is determinate internally and at the same time, you can solve the three supports reaction by the three equations of equilibrium. So, it means determinate 
externally and determinate internally. Okay, so that is about determinacy. Now, let's try to go in this stability or instability or unstable. Let's try to understand what is the meaning of unstable or stable structure. Okay, so that is now the stability of structure. So, a structure is said to be stable if it can resist applied loads without moving or collapsing internally. Okay, assuming that all members are sufficient to carry respective stages. Okay, so we can say that a structure is stable if it is not moving. Of course, that is the first definition of stable. Okay, it is not moving. And then second, it will not collapse given the external loadings. Okay, we are not yet on the sign. We are not yet on the sign. So let's forget first about the capacity or the strength of the members. Let's say that the members can carry all the loads, but we are analyzing here the stability with respect to the uh, support and then with respect to the uh, orientation of the members. Okay, so that is what we are investigating here, not the capacity. Okay, we are not talking here if the structure can carry because the members can uh, withstand the stresses. Okay, Th let's try to put that one on the analysis. This is only for stability. So if we say stability, we are talking here of the orientation of the support and the orientation of the members. If the position of the members and position of the support will make your structure stable or not. Okay, so that is stability of structure. So there are four, I listed here four. Okay, so we have here the first cause of unstable structure is insufficient support. So you can find it here in, where's that? Uh, in this one. Insufficient reactions. It means kulang na kulang yung reaction. Okay? Let's look at this. Okay, so this is a frame. Okay, this is a frame. And that is loaded by that force F. So, of course, if you will load that one, you will expect that that will bend. Okay? However, if you try to look at the support of that uh, frame, it is a pin. So, it means a pin cannot resist a moment. And this force here will create a moment with respect to this. If you will take a moment of that F here, that there will be a moment. Okay? So, the support should give a resisting moment for that not to rotate. However, in here, our support is pin. So it means there are only two support. So again, it is insufficient. There should be a moment, moment reaction for that not to rotate. So that is the first, very, very first reason of unstable structure. Insufficient support. Okay? Second, in here, B, okay, is parallel reactions. See, this is an example of parallel reaction. Okay, so look at this. Actually, this is insufficient insufficient support and at the same time parallel reaction okay look at this there are only two reactions and the direction of force is horizontal the direction of the reaction is only vertical resisting vertically and this is a ruler it means if you will go, if you are going to apply this force it will what do this one it will move okay it will move horizontally so again but if that is inclined, okay, look at this. It's okay. Even if this is insufficient, there are only two reactions. If this will be inclined, okay, if this will be inclined and that is the way of the action of the uh, force, then it will be stable. However, this is parallel. It means they are both resisting uh, vertical forces, but that is a horizontal force. So there is nothing to resist that one. So it will move. Your structure will move. Your thrust, since again, that those are pin your thrust will move. Okay. C is the concurrent reactions. Just like this one. Okay, look at this. There are three reactions. Which is, okay, enough. It is enough. It is enough. Okay, it is not insufficient. It is enough. And they are not parallel. Yes, they are not parallel. However, the problem there is concurrent reactions. As I've said, again, that's why we recall your systems. If you say concurrent, they meet on a single point. They meet on a single point. So this uh, reaction is going towards that line of action and so with that and so with this. So they meet on a single point. So it means they are concurrent reactions. All the reactions meet on a single point. So that mean, that is the meaning of concurrent reactions. So look at this. Uh, it's okay if I will lo load that one with a 
pure vertical force, no problem, okay? But if I will incline the force, external force, then look at this. This is a ruler, that is a ruler, that is a ruler. This will dance or this will move and at the same time it will tilt that way. So actually these broken lines here are the deformation uh, after applying the loads. So that means this is unstable, okay? And lastly, okay, so this is important, okay, especially on, uh, this is a special concept or this is an important concept of trusses. The stability of the structure when it comes to internal collapse mechanism. If you say internal collapse mechanism, okay, so we will try to focus ourselves in this figure. So look at this, this is a truss since that is pin connected. It means that it is free to rotate. If this is a frame, no problem. Okay, look at this, the support is enough, yes. It is restrained vertically and it is restrained horizontally since that is a pin. Okay, we do not need actually here a moment since of course there are two feet here so it will not rotate if you will apply any moment there. However, the problem here is, okay, if this is a frame, it's okay since the frame will resist the moment. But this is a truss, so that is a pin connected. It means it is free to rotate. So if I will apply this one, what do you expect? It will deflect that way or it will collapse that way since your connections are free to rotate. So that is what we call internal collapse mechanism, okay? There is no movement. There is no movement. Unlike this one, okay? It will rotate. In here, it will move. In here, it will move at the same time rotate. In here, it will just fall, okay? It will not move and it will not rotate. It will just fall. It will just collapse. So we call that one internal collapse mechanism because the problem there is not on the external support. The problem is the internal support or the member supports. Okay, the orientation of the member. That's why in trusses, okay, look at this. If I will try to put another member, a third member that will connect this one, which is a diagonal, that will give us triangular shapes, isn't it? That is the idea of trusses. That's why in trusses, they created, or a trusses is a chain of triangles. Okay, a chain of triangles. Because in triangles, the members support each other. Okay, the, if the other one will be stressed, the other member will be helping together with the other one, okay? The two members will help the other one which is under stress. But if that is a rectangle, okay, and they are free to rotate, then yes, they will help. They will not help each other because they will fall. And just like this one, there is no, la there is no diagonal bracing. Okay, so that is the idea of trusses. It is a chain of triangles. That's why there is no, if you will try to look on the trusses, there is no rectangular or square trusses. It is purely triangular trusses. Okay? So internal collapse mechanism. So again, as I've said, that is stability. It is unstable. If it is insufficient reaction, if all the, the reactions are parallel, if all the reactions are concurrent, and if there is insufficient internal support or insufficient members, so it will collapse internally. Okay? So that is stability and determinacy of structure. So, important concepts for us, okay, that we discuss here is that indeterminate structure consists of more members and more supports. And or more, okay, as I've said, uh, if we are talking of externally, we are just focusing on the supports. But if we are talk talking internally, then we consider the members as supports. So indeterminate is when the support, if that is external, okay, if it is internal, support and members, okay, the number is more than the equations of equilibrium, which is the, uh, all the available equations. Okay, so again, what we are just comparing here to determine if it is determinate or not is just the available equation with the number of the unknowns, or that is the reaction. Okay, now the second is, uh, important concept here is the stability. A structure is uh, is unstable, okay, due to four reasons, which is I listed here from A to D. First is insufficient support, okay. Second is the orientation of your supports. So this one, these two here, the parallel and concurrent are due to the orientation, okay, how we orient the reactions, how we position the reaction. So that is the second reason. So, insufficient reaction, orientation of the supports, and lastly, absence of lateral bracing or diagonal bracing. 
okay absence of lateral bracing or diagonal bracing so that will be the internal collapse mechanism so that is for your unit 2 okay unit 3 let's try now to uh, solve reactions so this is now reactions of determinate structure so again this is now theory 1 so we will only focus we will only focus on uh, what do this one determinate structures so deal with indeterminate once you will go with theory 2 but now at least we should know how to classify that is determinate or indeterminate okay so uh, in this unit we will apply the concept of your equilibrium okay which we discussed on your uh, unit 1 to calculate reactions of determinate structures okay so let's have examples here that's how we will discuss this one so again uh, actually this is just a recall this is just a recall since you discuss solving reactions from your mechanics okay so this is just a recall so determine the reactions of the support for the frame shown in the figure so this is the frame shown okay so we have this as a pin connected and that is a ruler so actually this is stable uh, okay but first we need to look if this is stable okay let's try to see if this is stable it is not uh, it is not prone to internal collapse mechanism since this is not a truss so this will not rotate this will, will not rotate so they will uh, resist the moment within the joints so we are good uh, these are not parallel reactions since there is one which is perpendicular to them they are not all parallel and they all not meet on a single point so it is not concurrent and there are enough it is not sufficient it is not insufficient it is sufficient reaction why it can resist horizontal because of that reaction it can resist vertical because of that reaction and even moment okay because these are two supports so if you will take a moment about that this will resist okay so that is now stable our problem now is to to determine the reactions okay so first step actually from your mechanics is to assume okay this is two reaction one reaction so assume directions uh, okay it's up to you how you will do this but for me i suggest okay for me the way i solve these reactions are to assume okay for me to assume directions for the meantime if you want if you want okay if you want a uniform solution you can always assume a positive direction if you want but if you are only already used to solving reactions actually you can assume in any direction and then you can uh, explain the reason if that will be negative later on okay but uh, if you are not yet used then i'd rather suggest assume a positive direction if you say positive isn't it uh, we uh, commonly use that right going to the right is positive going up is positive clockwise clockwise moment is positive okay so these are our, our, our assumption for positive forces here okay for the sake of discussion so for me uh, okay uh, there are three so let me solve it's up to you how you will deal with this one but my solution is to submit forces horizontally okay assuming that to the right is positive okay so what are the forces horizontal forces let's just focus on horizontal forces so this is a horizontal force the unknown reaction is ah is a horizontal force okay the subscript h is horizontal v is vertical a is of course the lit the letter of the joint okay the name of the joints okay summation horizontal so ah is positive since i assume that all going to the right is positive so positive and then what else this one if i will convert this one to a single force then that is a positive of course you know how to convert this one you should know this is a triangle so convert that one on a resultant which will be one half base time side that is just the area isn't it if that is this one uniformly distributed that is just like area of rectangle base times height but this is a tri triangle so one half base times height so one half base is 2.5 height is 18 so that will be converted to a force going to the right so that is a positive and then what else this is now the another the last horizontal which is to the left which is a negative since it is opposite my assumption of positive so if i will submit all of that that should be equal to zero since again our structure should be stable okay should be stable now this is the simple algebra guys uh, transfer but it will become a negative this will become positive so that will give me a negative 7.5 but okay what is the meaning of the negative this is very very important in the first place we only assume 
Okay, we only assume that is the meaning of that. Assume. It means we are, that is not the correct direction. That is just assumption based on our instinct. So in our assumption, since I assume that uh, always positive is my assumption, okay? So I assume that that is going to the right. But it ended up a negative. AH it ended up negative. It means that that should be the opposite. The negative means opposite direction. So it means your AH instead of my assumption to be going to the right, that should be going to the left. Okay, so that is this description here. So your AH is now going to the left. But okay, uh, later on, I will check that one once I will input the answer on the figure. But for now, I will still follow this assumption here. Okay, I will still follow this assumption here, which is going to the right. So summation of moment at A. Let me take the moment here so that I will cancel AH and AB. And I will now solve your... Ah, sorry. Okay, this is a typo. Okay, so that's it. Uh, this should be CB. So I will take a moment at A to solve your CB since I will take a moment here that will be cancelled. So taking a moment, I, my assumption is positive clockwise, okay? Clockwise is positive. So the uh, re the resultant of this is again convert that one into a single force, which is uh, area 1 half base times height. So that's it. What is the moment arm with respect to A, to point A? Is again, the concentration of triangular load is found within one third from the base. Isn't it? One third from the base or two-thirds from the point. That is the centroid. Again, that is the use of centroid. Centroid is for the resultant will act. And centroid is center of a triangle is found within one-third from the base, or that is two-thirds from the point, or from the uh, pointed, uh, pointed edge, or pointed side of the triangle. Okay, so again, uh, what is the one-third of 18? That is the moment arm, since again, one-third is found here. One third of 18 is the moment arm if that will be converted to a single force. So again, with respect to a that is that will rotate clockwise. So that is a positive moment. Now what else? This one. If I will convert this one, that will be found within the half, within the middle. So area is 1.5 times the length, which is 12 plus 16. That is 18, isn't it? 12 plus 6 is 18. 1.5 times 1.5. That is the concentrated load at the middle, and the moment arm is found within half of that so 18 divided by 2 is 9 that is where we will find this moment arm okay so positive y the force will do clockwise with respect to a that will have a clockwise moment with respect to a and then what else 15 but this time this will now give us counterclockwise with respect to a it will turn counterclockwise with respect to a so a negative moment of 15 times moment arm if this is 6, and that is 6, and this is 18, so this is 12, and that is 18, this uh, reaction to reaction distance vertically is 6, isn't it? 18 minus 12 is 6. But we need to add that one. So 6 below and 6 here will be 12. So our moment arm for 15 is 12. Again, a negative since that will be a counterclockwise with respect to A. And my assumption for positive is clockwise. And then finally, your CV, your unknown CV, that will again give us a counterclockwise with respect to A and moment arm is 12. Perpendicular distance is 12. So, algebra again, simple algebra. This will go on the other side to be positive. Divide both sides by 12 so that you will only have CV. And that will give us 16.5 kips. It is directly giving us a positive. It means my assumption is correct. That is the meaning of that. In here, we ended up negative. It means my assumption is the other way. It should be the other way. Okay, and then now let's solve the remaining, your AB. Okay, so, okay, uh, this is the final, but uh, let's still use this one, okay? So, for me to solve this one already, I already know that one, I already know that this is the only unknown. So, if I will use the summation vertical, so I will just focus myself on the vertical reactions. So, that will be the 1.5 and then AB and CB. So, AB is positive since that is my assumption. Going up is positive. So AB is positive, CB is positive, but CB is already 16.5. So AB plus 16.5 is positive, and then concentrated load of 1.5, convert that one to multiply it to 18. So negative since that is going down. So by algebra again, that will give me a positive 10.5 kips. It means it is correct. My assumption is upward. So the only uh, wrong here is the assumption of AH. So now, from my assumption, I need to correct that one here on the final answer. 
So, AV going up 10.5, CV going up 16.5, AH, which is a negative. So, my assumption going to the right should be now going to the left. So, this is now the final answer here. So, your, actually, this one is, uh, we explained that this is stable and this is determinate. Why? Because, of course, we can solve the reaction. If that is indeterminate, then we cannot solve this one by simply using uh, equilibrium equations. So that is for example number one. Let's try to have one more. Uh, determine the reactions at the, at the supports for the thrust shown in the figure. So let's try now to do thrust. Okay, these thrusts. Again, you need to, you, sh you should not be forgetting, okay, that in thrusts, the assumption for loading in thrusts should all be applied on the uh, on the joints, loads should all loads of trusses should all be on the joints, not within the member. Since we cannot have a moment on the members, okay. So this is now the solution. So this is now the figure. So by the way, this uh, four at sixteen, it means there are four distances here, and each of this is sixteen. So sixteen, 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 and sixteen. And then vertical, that is 12. Okay, 12. And that is supported by a pin and a ruler. So actually, this is stable. It will not slide down or up since there is a vertical reaction. It will not move horizontally since there is a horizontal reaction. It will not rotate since there are two reactions here. Okay, or I mean two supports. So, all we need to do actually now is solve the reaction. And actually, if you will compute in this one, if you will compute the external, external uh, determinacy, external determinacy of structure going back there. Okay, let's try to go there. Is all we need to do is compare. For us to know if that is externally determinate or not, is to compare the number of reaction with the uh, three equilibrium equation plus the additional condition. But in our case here, we do not have additional condition. Okay, in our case here, we do not have additional condition. So R here is 1, 2, 3. And then, uh, the available equation is the 3 equations of equilibrium plus if there is any condition, there are no conditions since there are no internal pin and there are no internal ruler. So 3 is equal to 3, determinate. Same thing here. Okay, in trusses, uh, getting the determinacy of a structure, it could be truss or beam, is simple, simple, okay? Compare the R with 3 plus the condition. So in here, okay, in trusses, of course, we will not consider here, in trusses, we will not consider your pins here as internal uh, joints. We cannot consider that as internal support. These are already assumption of trusses. So in trusses, we already assume that that is a pin. So we will not add that one in your uh, available equation, okay? That is not addition to equation. So, it means that your available equation for this truss is only 3. There is no that plus E sub C. Since again, there are no internal rulers here. And again, these pins are, uh, of course, expected in your joint since this is a truss. So, number of reactions, 1, 2, 3. So, 3 is equal to 3. Determinate truss externally. Okay, so now let's try to solve. Uh, my assumption again is always go positive. So, going to the right, going to the right, going up. That will always be my assumption, okay? Positive assumption. So now, uh, if I will try to take a summation of force, vertical, okay? Okay, so again, uh, for our solution, we will start with summation of forces vertical. Since, of course, uh, I want to solve first my EB, okay? My support EB, support reaction EB. So if I will try to take summation forces vertical, the only unknown is EB, so I can solve that one right away. So vertical, going up is positive, so AB is positive. This is uh, negative, 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 negative. All these are negative. But what I did here is that 3 times 30, since of course they are the same. So 3 times 30, that is a negative since it is going down, and a negative 15. One of that. So simply algebra, so 3 times 30 is 90, plus 15 is 105. It will go positive, so my assumption is correct upward. Okay? Take a moment at E. Okay, I will take a moment here to cancel these two reaction. I will find this AH already. Uh, clockwise positive. Okay, my assumption is always positive. Okay, so clockwise positive. If I will take a moment here, so this will be a clockwise, isn't it? 
30 clockwise, 30 clockwise, 30 clockwise, 15 clockwise. So actually, these are the same values of forces. The only difference are the moment arm. Moment arm of this is 16. Moment arm of that is 16, 16, 32. Moment arm of that is 16, 16, and 16, which will be 48. So actually, 30, the force, plus the summation of this one, since they are all positive. Okay? So 16, moment arm of the first one. Six, uh, 32, the moment arm of the second one. 48, the moment arm of the third one. Okay, that, this is just for me to simplify the calculation later on. But you can do it one by one, no problem. And 15 will turn positive again, clockwise. So 15 times moment arm, 16 times 4 is 64. And finally, what other force do we have? The unknown AH, which will give us counterclockwise with respect to E. So moment arm of this is 12, that is the vertical of the vertical distance or vertical dimension of the plus. So negative AH times 12. Uh, algebra, simple algebra, this will go positive, divide both sides by 12, this will give us exactly positive 320. So it means my assumption is correct, so that therefore, AH is to the right. Okay, now finally, uh, this is now the unknown. Uh, we know that one, we know this one, so if I will submit horizontally, and we know that one, then this will only be the unknown. Okay, going to the right is positive. So 320 is actually your AH, going to the right. Uh, e H is going to the right, so positive. What else? Are there no other external loadings horizontally? No, none. So there is none. So only 320 plus E H, they are all positive since they are all going to the right. Equated 1 to 0, this will go negative. So again, what is the meaning of negative? My assumption is wrong. So in the correct uh, direction of that is going to the left instead of to the right. So now let me outline that one. So going to the going up 105, going to the right 320, and to the left 320, which is correct for us to make this one stable horizontally, since there are no external uh, forces on the this structure, then the reaction should equal with each other. Okay, so going to the right, going to the left, so it is equilibrium horizontally, equilibrium vertically, and if you will take a moment at any point, equilibrium with respect to moment. Okay, so let's review some concept involving reaction and solving reactions. Assume an initial direction always. Okay, it's up to you. You can assume in any direction you want. But if you are not yet used with that, it is better for you to stick on assumption of positive always. And then if it will give you a negative, it means it is just the reverse. But if you are all already used, okay, let's say, uh, just like me, if I am already used in solving reactions, I can actually by instinct, by instinct, I know the direction of the correct reaction. So I can assume that one right away so that I will end up with all positive answers. But if you cannot yet do that one, better I suggest assume always positive direction. To the right, I mean to the right, to, I mean to the right. To the right, going up, and then a clockwise moment reaction. Okay, and then uh, all you need to do is to calculate these reactions, apply the equations of equilibrium, and if it ends up negative, the correct direction is just opposite the initial assumption. Okay, so that is the uh, analysis of uh, determinate structures, but actually this is just introduction, or this is just the preliminary or the foundation of the analysis of determinate. So first, you need to know your equilibrium equation and then what type of force system is that of course so need because if that is now 3d there will now be additional direction additional forces additional reactions but of course that will be discussed once we will go on the uh, next topics okay so all we need to do first for this uh, module is to focus on it 2d and then what else you need to know of course how to uh, determine if your structure is determinate or not okay you need to know if that's determinate or not Externally and internally. Okay, what is the reason of external determinacy? For us to figure out if we can solve the reaction. Because once we have the reaction already, then now we are ready to distribute to the members in each of the members. That is now when we need to find out if that is internally determinate or indeterminate. Okay, so again, external is for the reactions. Internal is for the member forces. Okay, and then once you know that one, of course, apply this ones on problems, and that is just like the unit 3, solving reactions. But now, uh, on solving the member forces, let's separate that one and separate module. 
Okay, so if you have any question, we can you can ask that one below the discussion, or we can discuss that one during the live meeting. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching.